Hello, my name's Stephen Collins. I'm an illustrator and this is my new book. It's called The Dinosaur Awards. It's written by Barbara Taylor and illustrated by me. Celebrate the 50 most amazing dinosaurs at the ultimate prehistoric prize giving. Now, if you don't know what an illustrator is, it's a person who does the, the drawings for a book or a magazine or a newspaper or something like that. Now, you don't need to be a grown up to be an illustrator. My son, who's seven years old, well, he was a bit younger when he did this, but he drew a giraffe and he did it so, he, he wanted to do it so big that he did it on three separate bits of paper. Now we're going to do an animal which is almost as big as that today called a Therizinosaurus. It's a dinosaur which I'd never heard of before I started drawing it and it is truly scary. So. Therizinosaurus was a weird and wonderful dinosaur that would have been quite a sight. It was about three times taller than an adult human, pot-bellied and had gigantic sword-like claws. Scientists think Therizinosaurus' enormous claws may have been used to pull leafy branches down into its beak. They might also have been used for defence against predators. And it's even possible the humongous claws were useful for ripping open termite mounds, like the giant claws of anteaters today. The dinosaur's wide hips supported its huge barrel-shaped gut, which would have helped Therizinosaurus digest large amounts of plant material. However, this big belly would probably have made Therizinosaurus waddle around slowly and clumsily, not very dignified. Scientists haven't yet found a complete skeleton of this curious dinosaur, so some features, like its teeth, are still a mystery. Okay, so let's get drawing the Therizinosaurus. So all, all I've got here is a few, a few paints. This is gouache, which is a bit like watercolour, and I've got some coloured pencils, and I've got a normal HB pencil, and I've got a rubber, and I've got a couple of brushes. But you don't need all this stuff to do, to do uh, illustrations. This is just what I use. So we know that the Therizinosaurus had a great big barrel-like belly to digest all its plants and we know it had three big long claws and what I do when I'm starting out is I get my pencil and I'm drawing just in shapes. So for the barrel-like belly let's do a sort of a just an egg. It's always a good idea just to think in terms of eggs and sausages. My paint brushes have already gone on the floor eggs and sausages so there's an egg and then let's have a a very thin sausage coming out the top and two sausages for legs sausages are quite a good shape to think with because they're they're sort of curly and that allows them to look sort of like the limbs of these creatures and a couple more sausages here just light drawings, light shapes, just to get a sense of the shape of this creature. Uh, it, it, the, the text we just read said it sort of waddled along because it had very wide hips. I'm going to do three little, three little sausages for its feet down the bottom there. And it had these really strange claws which made it look completely terrifying. But in actual fact, it wasn't a predator, they don't think, other than unless you were a termite, maybe. Um, and uh, it probably used these claws for peaceful means. To pull down trees, maybe, to get coconuts. and maybe, or, But maybe to pull apart a termite mound, like we see with anteaters today. So, and then for the head, this, basically it's like a sort of a bird's head a bit like a flamingo or something like that really is the strangest looking creature and then we we continued the body out in another sort of curly sausage shape like this so something like that maybe a little bit more shaped there to make it more sort of more sort of like a bottle and there's its big tummy where it's digesting all its plants. Now I'm going to slightly 
make those lines a bit lighter by rubbing over them very lightly with my with my rubber because we don't want the the drawing lines to show through too much with the finished illustration. And then I'm going to start with the base colours. So now it had a sort of brown area on its on its tummy. So we'll start with and that and that extended all the way up its neck. So we'll start with that. Let's get some water. I just let's get more water over here. Start up here and its brown tummy sort of comes all the way down here. Like that, and then a little bit more there. Okay. Now then, it's I, I'm going to do the feathers of this animal green. Now, the thing about drawing dinosaurs is that we don't really know what colours they were. So you can make anything up that you like, really. It could have been bright pink. It seems unlikely that it was bright pink because there's not many bright pink animals in nature today and it doesn't help them be camouflaged. So generally, I try to sort of have a guess at what these, these animals might realistically the colours that they might realistically have. Now what I'm doing here is, this is a slightly darker green colour, so I'm going to put it all on the sides where our Therizinosaurus is going to be more in the shade. So if the light's coming down from this way, then his darker side is going to be sort of around on his on this side really. There we go, all up there, and then I've got a slightly lighter green, which might not come out, but we'll give it a go anyway. Slightly lighter green for the side where he's in the light. All up his wing, I suppose we could call it a wing even though this animal couldn't fly. It was far too big and cumbersome to fly. The paints I'm using are called gouache. Uh, they're a bit like normal watercolours, um, slightly more opaque. So you can see here I've gone over this dark area, which I didn't mean to put there, and it's sort of obscuring it slightly more than a watercolour might. Uh, and got the other side of his tummy in my darker green. Down here, under there. And I'll colour in his feet a bit. And now we're getting somewhere with Therizinosaurus. Now, it doesn't matter if it looks blotchy and a bit rubbish at the moment because all these are are the, the base colours, the bottom colours for the, the drawing. What I do is I do the first part in paints just to get all the colours going over all the drawings uh, uh, to, to make the shapes of the, of the, of the dinosaur and then I do all the details in pencils a bit later on. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then we've got the start of our Therizinosaurus. Now I've got a slightly sort of light brown colour here to make it look like he's on the ground. It's good to have a bit of a bit of shadow underneath him, just a suggestion of some ground on the bottom. And for the claws, remember those great big claws, 
I'm going to use brown as well because claws tend not to be the same colour as the feathers, do they? On animals that we see these days. Uh, there we go. I'm almost regretting not doing him bright pink now. It would have looked pretty cool if he was like a bright flamingo pink. Now where I have to rest my hand on what I've painted already, I'm trying not to move my hand around too much on the paints so that I don't smudge them. Okay, and that's the first part done. We've got the main paints started for Therizinosaurus. Okay, so I've left that for a bit to dry and I actually realised that I forgot to do my eyes. So with, like I say, with gouache, the good thing about gouache is it will, it does have quite an opaque white, unlike watercolour. So we can, we can do, do some eyes up here in white and they will, um, they shouldn't be too see-through. So just brush my brush off there. Now, whilst that's drying, we're going to do Therizinosaurus's feathers. Now they are pretty much all over the body. I'm not sure if they were all over the body in real life, but that's how I'm going to do it. And that's one of the nice things about illustrating a dinosaur book is you can kind of use a bit of artistic license, which means you can just guess really to a certain extent, although we do have to make it as scientifically accurate as possible considering what we do know about these dinosaurs. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the feathers. Now the feathers were probably not so long as to be useful other than to keep it warm, maybe. Um, it did certainly couldn't fly. They know from the size of its bones and the structure of its body that it's very unlikely that, well, it's impossible that this animal could have fl flown. So um, we do, I'm just doing little feathers like this just to keep it warm while it's hard at work attacking termites and pulling down trees. Now, this was, whilst it wasn't, they, they don't think it was a carnivore or a predator, it certainly was a terrifying looking thing. It was as three times the size of a person. And, you know, with a neck like this, it really would have towered quite high. So I'm not sure I would have wanted to meet it especially with these claws. Now at this point I'll probably speed up the video a little bit so that you don't have to watch me drawing every feather on the Therizinosaurus's body because as I found out when I was drawing my dinosaur book it does take quite a while to cover every dinosaur in feathers. So let's speed it up a bit now shall we. Okay, so now we have thoroughly feathered our Therizinosaurus. What a tongue twister that is. Right, so um, now on the on the front of the body, there's there's more of a. I I I reckon we. I I think this is probably a bit of a guess when I decided this, but you know some birds have more of a kind of uh, less feathery area on their bellies and necks, so. What I've done is I've left it. I think he had a sort of, it had sort of bones which crossed. They think they ha it had bones from its wings which crossed under its body around there. And then, so I'm just drawing its sort of gizzard skin area with lines, horizontal lines going all the way up here. And now we are 
into the area of making our Therizinosaurus look a bit more detailed. Just putting the details on. We're very nearly there. Now, um, I think it had quite well. No, we don't know this, but I think this was a guess. We, I, I thought I'd do some sort of feathers on top of its head to make it look a little bit kind of crazy up there. And let's give it some eyes. Drawings always really start to come alive when, when you add the eyes. My eyes are quite cartoony, even though we're drawing a real, a, a, a quite scientifically accurate book. Um, and dinosaurs often had this, I can't remember what this bit's called, but a sort of a, uh, a bit of skin, like some birds do at the back of their mouth. So uh, I'm not sure what it was for. <laughs> Keep the food in when it's going down, maybe. Now, they didn't really know what its teeth were like, as I said earlier when I was reading the, reading the description out of it. So I'll, I'll just put little... I don't think they found any, any Therizinosaurus teeth, actually. So we'll have a little bit of a guess with the teeth. I think you can make fairly good educated guesses. If they think this was a, a um, plant-eating dinosaur, probably it didn't have huge sharp teeth so let's stick let's play it safe and do little teeth up there now uh, i'll define these the, the the white paint of the eyes has dried a bit now i'll define the eyes a bit more give a bit of definition to his mouth up here and i think we're pretty much done there is enosaurus now i just to give you an idea of how, how what, what size a person was compared to this thing. Let's just draw a person here. So about a third of the way up, so he's about three times as tall as a, pe as a person. So imagine if this is you and you're down here, start getting your photo taken next to your friend, Therizinosaurus. Um, now that gives you a sense of what this animal was like. As, what, what do you think of my Therizinosaurus, Megan? You like it? Okay, thank you. Has my daughter just come in there? Um, okay, so we'll do a smile, smiling person next to the Therizinosaurus. Because we know he probably wouldn't have eaten us. And there he is, smiling for the photograph. Let's put a bit of detail on the ground here. And even if it wasn't going to eat me, that's definitely not an animal. I would have liked to have met in a dark jungle. Therizinosaurus. Scourge of anthills everywhere. <laughs> so thanks for watching my tutorial how to draw a Therizinosaurus. I hope it wasn't too terrifying for you. It is a pretty scary looking beast. Um, there's plenty more terrifying dinosaurs in the Dinosaur Awards out now which has been great fun to draw, and there was an awful lot of feathers. I do hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.